of better things for better living through chemistry. Nearly everything in our daily lives is improved by chemistry. From transportation to the clothes we wear. Chemistry helps bring us better food, makes our homes more beautiful, more comfortable, helps protect our health, and adds to the enjoyment of our leisure time. Now, tonight's story on the DuPont Theater. I'll never forget the time Mr. Benham come to live with us. That was the year, I remember, of the big dry. No rain had fell for so long, the ground was as dry as powdered rock. That was the year I was so scared. Seems like I was scared all the time. Nothing growed that year, and Daddy, like all the other folks, was worried. I guess I was too young to understand. Why all the fuss over a little old rain? And then, when I saw Millie Bell, I knew. Please don't die, Millie Bell, please! Oh, Millie Bell. She's already dead, Joni. Come on now, honey. There's no use to cry. Oh, sis, sis, she was mine. I raised her from a little baby. I know, hon, I know. That Sabina? Thunder! Hon, don't be so scared. It's only Simeon Wells. Setting off more dynamite, hoping to start a cloud burst. Come on now. I'll get Jacob to bury Millie Bell. Come on. Oh, honey, come on, Joni. Don't cry, darling. That was the night Daddy had the big meeting with all the folks at our house. I was itching with curiosity and come down in my night clothes to see. Perhaps our trouble has been brought upon us with good reason. Well, what kind of talk is that, Slade? Well, the kind of talk that some of you won't want to hear. But it's plain enough. We just haven't done everything that we should have done. I paid good money for that blasting powder. More than ten dollars. Ain't my fault it didn't bring the rain. Yeah. If we'd have gave Nanny Garbutt the fifty dollars she asked for, she'd have brung us rain for now. Gunpowder and witches. And you call yourselves a civilized community. What's your answer, Mr. Slade? We got a church standing up there at the end of the North Pasture. A church, Jacob, but no preacher. We had a preacher. How long ago? And while he was here, did we as a community support him? Wait a minute, Mr. Slade. We're all fit to lose our crops, even our homes, the color is dry. And you called us here tonight to yammer about a preacher? I still feel that it falls on us to do our simple duty. That's why I called you here tonight. I took it upon myself to send for another preacher. The answer came this morning. A pastor by the name of, by the name of Matt Benham will be here tomorrow. He'll be living here with me and Sabina and Joni. You think he's going to bring us rain, Mr. Slade? Well, maybe not. But perhaps he can teach us how to pray for it. It was the next morning after the meeting, while I was out picking wild berries, that I first seen Mr. Benham. Or, rightly speaking, first heard him a-playing away on that mouth harp. Please don't stop. It was pretty. Oh, thank you. Well, come on, sit down. I'll play the rest of it for you. Come on. I'd say it's just about the right kind of a song for a young lady your age.
That was the most just beautiful music I ever did hear. Was it now? Beautiful dreamer. Uh, what did it make you dream of, little man? Nobody ever called me that before. Little man. It, it made me think of white rabbits. Like they was dancing in the grass. And a yellow moon shining through the trees. <laughs> well, I guess each of us hears the old songs according to his individual ears. Now, to me, it, it might have been a psalm sung by a king with a harp long, long ago. A psalm? Then you must be Mr. Benham. That's right. Where'd you hear my name? Daddy told us you was come to live with us. I'm Joni Slade. Well, are you now? Well, I'm right pleased to meet you, little man. Do you suppose you could lead me the rest of the way? Sure. Come on. Well, that was a very, very tasty supper, Mr. Slade. Uh, Sabina's pretty handy with a skillet. Here, sit down, Mr. Benham. Thank you. Poor girl, she's had to learn to be. Well, they have no mother? Oh, my wife died nearly ten years ago. The epidemic smallpox took off half the community. I'm grateful you're here, Mr. Benham. We need you. All of us need your guidance. Well, it might just happen to be the other way around. I beg your pardon? Faith is like a rope, Mr. Slade. It's a good hold on both ends to keep it from slipping. <laughs> I never quite thought of it in that light before. <laughs> Little ma'am, those were just about the finest huckleberries I've ever eaten. Will you play us another tune, Mr. Benham? No, no, no. Not now, Johnny. It's past your bedtime. Good night, dear. Good night, Daddy. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, honey. Good night. You know, somehow I expected an older man, Mr. Benham. I gather that you're not married. No, Mr. Slade, I'm not. I was, but uh, she died. Well, I'm sorry. I'll see who it is, Father. Good evening, Sabina. Jacob, I wasn't expecting you tonight. I thought I'd pay a call to meet the new preacher man. Of course, Jacob. We just finished supper. Jacob Mott, this is Matt Benham. Jacob is Sabina's betrothed. Glad to make your acquaintance, Jacob. So, you're the rainmaker. Jacob! Well, ain't that why he's here? To bring his rain? Only the good Lord makes the rainfall, friend. In his own good time. I thought maybe you'd bring it in your carpet bag. Or maybe he was gonna coax it out of that mouth harp I heard you playing. That's enough, Jacob. You're not being funny. Uh, Sabina, get Jacob some coffee. Never mind the coffee, Sabina. I don't feel like none. Now, well, let's... Let's all sit down. I'll, uh... I'll look forward to seeing you in church, Jacob. Well, uh... No, afraid not. Jacob, you don't mean that. Sure do. May I ask why? Can, if you like. I just don't believe in it, that's all. But Jacob don't always mean what he says. Don't you go talking for me, Sabina. Men every word of it. You might as well know. I ain't got much use for what you stand for. Well, every man's entitled to his beliefs, Jacob, or even his lack of them. Usually there's a good reason. I got my reasons. I had a belly full once, and I'd never forgot. That was a long time ago, Jacob. You're only a boy of 14 then. Can't you forget? I ain't never forgot. And I don't aim to, not so long as I live. Worst of it is I believed in that preaching man and all that soft talk he spun. The night my pappy and mama laid her dying of the epidemic, I went to him and I begged and begged him to tell me what to do. I went to him, mind you. You know what he said? Pray, Jacob, says he. Get down on your knees and pray. Did you? Of course I did. They died all the same, just like Sabina's and Joni's mama and half the other folks around here. Why didn't God answer our prayers then? He did, Jacob. He told you he was calling them home. I'll say good night now. I 
know for I ain't wanted. You'll have to overlook Jacob, Mr. Benham. He's a good man, but bitter. The death of his parents hit him awfully hard. Please be patient with him. When I entered the Lord's service, Mr. Slade, I don't recollect he appointed me a judge. I think that young man is fighting very hard against his true beliefs. Sabina? Yes, hon, what is it? When I'm grown up like you, will men fight over me, too? How you talk? <laughs> Nobody's fighting over me, hon. If so, heard the argument between Jacob and Mr. Benham. Oh, spying again, huh? Joni, I've told you before, folks that spy see things they shouldn't, and like as not, don't rightly understand what they do see. Jacob's arguing had nothing to do with me. Did so? Anybody can see Mr. Benham's sweet on you, the way he looks at you. Joni, you stop that now, do you hear? Well, he is so, and you know it, and Jacob knows it, too. You hush now. Go to sleep. Just a long dry, hon. It's got everybody's nerves ready to snap. Can't go to sleep. Mr. Benham bring us rain, Sabina. Is Mr. Benham gonna bring us rain? Turn to our play right after tonight's story of DuPont Chemistry. Well, how'd you make out, Jimmy? Oh, we lost. Well, that's too bad. What happened? I dropped an easy pop fly, and two of their guys scored. Well, don't worry about it, son. See, a ball game's like anything else. In order to win it, you have to learn to play a little better. But how will I ever make the Little League team now? You keep working at it, son. You'll make it. Yeah, and I suppose someday I'll make the big league, too. Well, it isn't which league you're in that counts, son. It's how well you do the job you're best equipped to do. This country needs big leaguers and little leaguers just as it needs big business and little business. Dad knows what he's talking about because, though Jimmy doesn't realize it, only a few years ago, his dad was having a hard time setting up his own business. A skilled mechanic, he had been experimenting in his garage workshop with a new idea for a gearbox for use in electronic computers. But the pop fly he had missed was finding the right material for the gears. It had to be something that was lightweight and needed no lubrication. He thought a plastic might do the job and went to a large chemical company for advice. The company representative suggested nylon plastic, a product of extensive chemical research and development. Jimmy's dad found a molder to make the gears for him, and they worked fine. Before very long, he was in business. He called on suppliers to manufacturers in the electronics industry, and as orders came in, he set up a small plant, hired assistants, bought more equipment. He had established a successful business, just as thousands of small firms do every year. Yes, America needs both big business and little business, and each needs the other. For big companies can take on responsibilities and do big jobs that smaller ones aren't equipped to do because of their size. Only a big business, like DuPont, can afford the huge investment in money and manpower necessary to develop such things as dyes, cellophane, man-made textile fibers, plastics, and many others. But as you have seen, these developments of big companies, like DuPont, help hundreds of small businesses get started, help them prosper by supplying useful basic materials, which the smaller firms turn into products that benefit you. 
For example, this teamwork between DuPont and small businesses throughout the country brings you so many of DuPont's better things for better living through chemistry. And now, back to DuPont Theater. Now, before we pray, I'd like to set myself straight with those of you who are gathered here this Sunday morning for the first of our meetings. I like to think of myself as a man of God, or more rightly, one who tries to serve him. Now, that doesn't make me out to be any special kind of creature. As the book tells us, we're all equal in the eyes of the Lord. We're all his children. Now, look at me. What do you see? Just a man made of the same flesh and blood as yourselves? Do I have any special powers? I doubt that. Do I have any kind of inside track to the Lord's ears? I doubt that. Then let me ask you something. Did you send for me to wrestle some kind of special favor out of God? To make a bargain with him? Is this why we've gathered here in the Lord's house on this his holy day to seek a favor? I hope not. I hope we're here to ask his guidance, his strength, and the wisdom to understand his way. Now let us pray. O oh Lord, our Father, you know our needs. Our land is parched. We suffer greatly. Our land is harsh. We suffer greatly. Give us the strength to withstand this adversity. Give us the strength to withstand this adversity. But if your divine wisdom decrees that the rain shall be withheld, give us the humility to accept this decision. Give us the humility to accept this decision. On earth as it is in heaven, thy will be done. Amen. 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 What kind of a sermon is that? Accept our adversities. Are we supposed to give thanks for the worst dry in 20 years? We done like you said, Peter. Come here this morning, meek as lambs. You call him a preacher? I put my faith in my blasting powder. Look at Sabina, will you? She certainly thinks that he's something mighty special. That was a fine sermon, Mr. Benham. I wish I could feel there were more who agreed with you. Well, what about you, little ma'am? Did anything I say make sense to you? Well, everything you said was, was wonderful. Well, Mr. Slade, it looks like I was a fizzle. Well, I wouldn't exactly say that, Mr. Benham, only I, I'm afraid it wasn't the kind of talk they expected to hear. They're farmers desperate for rain. As I said before, I'm, I'm not a rainmaker. Only the Lord makes the rain to fall in his own good time. I don't think he needs any prompting from me on how to conduct his affairs. But couldn't you put in a little reminder, just to satisfy the congregation? I did as much as I thought was fitting, Mr. Slade. Well, it's a poor kind of faith that depends on people getting what they want or, or what they think they need. We need the rain, Mr. Benham. Of course we do, Sabina. But perhaps we need something else even more. I wondered what Mr. Benham meant. Perhaps we need something else even more. I didn't understand all this arguing and fighting. I just felt scared all the time. Jacob, you've got no call to talk about Mr. Benham the way you do. I don't want to hear another word from him. Do you hear? I don't know why you've been behaving the way you have ever since Mr. Benham arrived Mr. here. Mr. Benham again. What's that fake rainmaker to you? He never claimed to be a rainmaker. And don't you dare call him a fake. Oh, Sabina, huh? You've been behaving to him like an old bull tearing up a cabbage patch. Maybe I have. If I have, I'm sorry. Are you, Jacob? Are you? No. Afraid not. That's why you waited till he went out with Father tonight to come here and tell me you're proud of the way you've been behaving. And him a minister. He may be a minister, but I see in the way he looks at you. 
What's that supposed to mean? Meaning he's in love with you. That's what. Them that has jealous eyes sees what their hateful hearts tells them to see. You calling me hateful, Sabina? Oh, not you, Jacob. Something inside you. There's something in you, Jacob, that worries me. Something dark and ugly, like a weed. Oh, I don't mean just about Mr. Benham. You're bitter, Jacob. You're dark and bitter. Mighty nice names you're calling me tonight, Sabina. Especially from the girl I'm going to marry. I can't marry a jealous man, Jacob. Or one who's turned his back on God. You don't mean that. Yes, Jacob, I do. All right, Sabina. You've made yourself plain. The weeks passed, but Mr. Benham never once prayed for rain. He kept talking and talking about the Lord doing his work in mysterious ways. We was all to try to put our minds to understand the Lord's will. Nobody listened. Fact is, by now, there was hardly nobody left to listen. Kind of most of the folks had stopped coming to the meetings. Well, I've tried. Lord knows I've tried. But I guess I've failed. They're farm folk, Mr. Venom. Their needs are simple and few. Right now, it's rain. They don't understand your refusal to ask for it. For that matter, do you understand it, Mr. Slade? No. Now you mention it, no, I don't understand it either. You, Sabina? Little man? And I have failed worse than I thought. Simeon Wells Dynamite. You expect me to compete with that? But couldn't you try just a little harder to see it their way? Well, suppose I had and the rain had fallen. Would I then be a rainmaker? And if I prayed over a sickbed and a child got well, would I then be some kind of supernatural medicine man? And if I did any or all of these things and nothing happened, what then? Would I be a fraud? An empty man spouting empty words? I'll be packing to leave now. I don't want you to go. Please don't go, Mr. Benham. Honey, I have to leave. It'll only make things worse if I stay. And not just you remember. You can't make your happiness depend upon getting what you want. It has to come from accepting what is. Can you understand that, Joni, child? I'll try. Good. Then I can leave feeling I haven't failed so badly after all. Hey! Hey! Can you hear me in here, Slade? It brush fires busted loose. Simeon Wells Dynamite set the whole north pasture blazing. The church is the last time I see it, it's almost gone. <laughs> Well, we've done what we could. Now, I... I think we should give thanks that no lives were lost. Oh, Lord, our Father. You! You, Simeon! It was you and your blasting powder that started all this! You was all for it when I started. Simeon's <laughs> right, Arkett. We should have stopped him. We're all responsible for what we did and what we failed to do. Don't try to shift the blame, Mr. Slade. My barn just went up in smoke. All account of the fire this idiot started. Jacob, control yourself. You stay out of this. Enough damage has been done. Don't make it any worse. I've lost everything I own. And I say Simeon's gonna pay. No, Jacob. Enough harm has been done this day. I warned you. <laughs> Jacob, have you gone crazy? Burned to the ground. Everything gone, burned to the ground. Jacob, you have struck a man of God. Get out on your knees and pray for forgiveness. He got what was coming to him. Maybe it's you who's got something coming, Jacob. Jacob, don't you understand what you've done? Leave him be. Can't you see he's half out of his mind with shock? 
Now, it's all right, friend. I was packed to leave before this. I'll be saying goodbye now. Don't go, Matt. Please don't leave us now. So it's Matt now, and Sabina? He means so much to you, why don't you go with him? He hadn't asked me to. I'm asking you now, Sabina. Sabina. It's come at last. Sabina. <laughs> it's the rain. <laughs> the bed. <laughs> it's all right, Sabina. I understand. <laughs> yes, Jacob? I just had to tell you, Mr. Bennett. I'm sorry. I know I've been wrong. Deep down inside, I know it for a long time. If you stay, I'll help build your new church, Mr. Bennett. Thank you, Jacob. I wish you every happiness, Sabina. Jacob? Right then, I know. Come to me in a flash, like the rain had come. What Mr. Benham had meant all along. Because Mr. Benham, he loves Sabina. And he lost her to Jacob. But Mr. Benham, he never once complained. Not even when he married them together. Because Mr. Benham, he knowed Sabina loved Jacob. And that was the will of the Lord. Oh, oh Jacob. Congratulations, Jacob. Sabina, dear. I want to wish you every happiness. Thank you, Congratulations. Joni, I'd say this is a fitting occasion for a June, wouldn't you? Yes. I guess Mr. Benham was right. Now I understood what he had meant when he said he needed something else. Because all the trouble we had shared, it brought us closer together than we'd ever been before. Somehow I never was scared again. Because I never felt alone no more. a Don W. Sharp, Warren Lewis production. Next week, James Daly stars as an alcoholic who must stop drinking or die. Alcoholics Anonymous was born out of this life and death struggle. This true story on DuPont Theater is called One Day at a Time. Brought to you by the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. Makers of better things for better living through chemistry.